Welcome to another Zen Rose Garden Pro Tip Series. Coming up in this video, empathic leadership. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to enhance your empathic abilities and some empathic practice exercises. Absolutely, this is part of our empath playlist. Playlist link down below. And we do have an offer at the end. If you're watching live, give us a hashtag live tribe. And if you're watching on the replay, like that, okay? Give us a hashtag replay fam. If you are just getting to know us. I'm Heather. And I'm David. From ZenmosGarden.com. And we love helping people bring their unique healing gifts to the world in a big way. Okay, so let's let's get into this topic today. Because even though we get so many questions about how it can get out of control, sometimes we forget that the gift of empathy is what makes you beautifully human. Today, we're gonna talk about empathic leadership, a yes. little bit different spin for you and how to enhance empathic abilities in your life as a leader, however right. that shows up for you. So this video is going to help you if you struggle with your emotional and somatic empathy in your work, job, career, and talk about what it takes to use your empathy as a leader. I first want to lay a quote on you. You guys know how I love quotes. Quote time. Oh. Um, Theodore Roosevelt said, nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. Can we take a moment for that one? Now that we have totally flipped the pancake over, we want to know, do you struggle with empathy at work? This can be either having too much empathy or too little empathy, like you've shut it down. One so reason people feel uncomfortable with empathy as a leadership characteristic is because they believe that it signifies weakness. That's so old school, but really the leader that lacks empathy makes everybody weak, right? People. Right. People that work for that leader will always be protective. They're seeing the leader as the enemy. Especially some of you sensitive people, right? right? I mean, so the the person is always going to be in fight or flight, mm -hmm. um, protecting their emotions and their energy, and they're going to feel threatened with a leader that lacks empathy. But unfortunately, a lot of leaders do. Right. So when a leader is empathetic, employees know that their feelings will never be simply overlooked or ignored because the empathic leader is tapping into the emotions of others and looking out for their best interests. Empathy is the skill of understanding and recognizing other people's feelings and perspectives. Right, the ability to understand what others are feeling is a skill that should, obviously, contribute to effective leadership. So, and it is true, um, leadership training professionals are slowly realizing uh, that there is a big connection between empathy from the leader and job performance of the employees. Right. It should be a no brainer. So in business, empathy allows you to create an environment of open communication and more effective feedback. So a leader can understand and explore problems that employees face and how to help resolve them because empathy teaches you presence. Healthy empathy teaches you presence. Right. Um, you are listening attentively and you're focusing on the person in front of you without being distracted. The empathic leader knows how to create bonds and thereby create a healthy community enthusiastic teamwork and leadership as well as cooperation. So I don't know if you've ever had this experience, but I've been in a business meeting with a leader, like a boss, and they're like, I we need to have a conversation, da 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 and we'll be having a conversation face to face. I'll feel like they're they're engaged with my conversation and they'll be like, Oh, just a minute. Oh, okay. Just you know what I mean? They'll like try to multitask and you're sitting there going, Wow Okay. Suddenly, this conversation just got less important. And that's tough, I think. And I've, I've seen a lot of bosses do that. And I think it's a very simple thing to just focus on the person. It has right. such a big impact. You care about me and what I have to say. And this five minutes is mine. Yes. So when it comes to commonly accepted qualities for a successful leader, unfortunately and oddly, Empathy is rarely included in those accepted qualities. I think that's weird because, but empathy, using empathy in leadership allows other people to feel safe when things fail because you're not always going to have success in the workplace. So it brings the tribe together when they know they're listened to, when they know that they are supported and appreciated. So it allows you to feel safe when things fail, like let's say right. a project fails and allows 
um, the team, the boss, the employee to be more solution oriented rather than be in fear for a failed project. Absolutely. So leaders are more able to understand the root cause behind poor performance instead of just being angry about it. And they can more effectively help employees improve and excel because they are solution oriented. So here's, here's the thing. If empathy allows leaders to build and develop relationship with those that they lead, why aren't we being more empathetic at work? Absolutely. Okay. The most obvious is that the empathic expression in the workplace is still regarded, unfortunately, as a form of weakness. Okay. This is so mafia, but it's nothing personal. It's just a business, right? We kind of think of that mantra when it comes to the workplace. And personally, I think it should be personal and business. That's a better business model, in there's, my opinion. There's a balance. Of, of course. course, there's also one other reason, or more than one reason. There is demonstrating empathy. It's hard, right? It's not an easy thing to do. It takes effort to cultivate that awareness and that understanding and getting out of your own head to focus on maybe helping somebody else. So it means putting others ahead of yourself sometimes, which is a challenge in a competitive workplace because right. we're taught to really compete, compete, compete. Oh, it's weird because I see this bleeding over into the spiritual metaphysical businesses sometimes right. when people compete with each other and get jealous and insecure. We're all fucked up. <laughs> and there's, there's plenty to go around. There's plenty of business. So there's no reason to get jealous of each other. We've all got right. something to give. Many organizations are focused on achieving goals, no matter what the cost, to the mental health of the employee or employees. So They're not looking out for the best interest of their tribes. I love what Medium Star, Star says. Yes. Uh, a reminder to ourselves, my empathy starts to decline when I begin feeling used. Yeah. And so would anybody, right? You start going into protective mechanisms, yeah. especially when I know they are just talking to me about their feelings because they are looking for a free reading. This is at work. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's, that's, you know, I think for people that do this kind of thing, you gotta, you gotta have boundaries. Yeah. You know, I, I have a couple of rules when I'm in public and I'm not in pro mode. Right. I don't talk about business, religion, or politics. Yes. I'm out having fun. Um, because I know a lot of people who do this kind of work mm -hmm. uh, run into that issue. But yeah. I and have it, like pretty strict boundaries with an myself. An easy way to do that, to shift that into balance is, okay, well, let's schedule an appointment where you're right. going to pay me. I mean, <laughs> just, by, just by saying scheduling an appointment, let's put you on the books, they will stop doing this crazy thing where they're overextending and looking for a handout, basically. Um, only happens to me at work, specifically with two people. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, next time I would suggest maybe taking a business card or, or getting a, getting, a, getting your calendar out, getting your phone. Okay. Um, let's put you on the books. It's going to cost a hundred dollars <laughs> or whatever your, whatever your actual price is. Boom. Let's put you on the books. Yeah. That's a tough thing. It I, sounds I, like more than we can go into right here. Let me put you on the books and get you an actual reading. Yeah. So it's an occupational hazard. Is. Here is a simple way to start right. with shifting, uh, empathy in the workplace. So first, First, always your, to your advantage mm -hmm. is that empathy is a natural part of the human experience. It is absolutely amazing. Amazing, right? Amazing. So one key trait of empathic people is their ability to listen attentively to those around them when it's in balance and when you have your boundaries set in place, it's even better. So one way that the empathic leader does this is by paying more attention to both the verbal and the nonverbal cues that are a part of everyday communication. So here's the key. The key empathic skill to develop for effective empathic leadership is this, to be able to shift focus from the story that's in your mind to the actual message that's being presented. So if there's one skill to develop, that's the base skill. Get out of your own head so that you can more easily listen empathically and build that communication to receive the data points that are coming in. Get rid of your filters. It's not about you in that moment. It's about whoever you're communicating with, okay? So we're going to have more on how leaders can cultivate a culture of empathy in just a moment. Is this making sense to you? Let us know in the comments. Let's see what you think. Um, does empathy make a better leader? Yes 
or no, and why if you are feeling sassy. If you're feeling absolutely sassy, let us know, yes or no, and why. Let's talk about how leaders can encourage a culture of empathy. And when I talk about leaders, I'm kind of talking about leaders all across the board, because it doesn't just have to... um, It's not just in business. Right, it doesn't have to just apply to the workplace, business, your career. You should be a leader in your own life. Yes, please. So first, the focus should not be on whether goals are achieved or not. Achieving goals is important in the workplace and in your life, but the focus shouldn't be simply that. The focus should be on better metrics like how people are feeling. It should be on fulfilling the collective purpose of creating something meaningful and giving people a purpose. Right, so empathy helps leaders understand the inner purpose that drives each employee or your kids or person, and your or person, right? Or follower. And and how that inner drive lines up with the goals of the company. So right. you've got if you can engage the inner drive and you've got you you need your empathy to get to what that inner drive is mm-hmm. for your employee, um if if that's in line uh, if you if you know what that is, you can figure out how it lines up with the goals of your business. You put those two in line, and then the goal has more meaning and purpose. Not only for you and for the community as a whole, but also for everybody who is following you, playing their part in building that up. Whether it's an employee, whether it's a follower, whether it's somebody on Instagram, it doesn't matter. What is one thing that you and me as leaders can do to change our mindsets to create a more empathetic workplace? Recognizing that how we understand what we see around us is a reflection of our perception, not only from our personal experiences, but from stories and ideas passed down through family, culture, community, the different things that we see in the workplace, all of those kinds of things. So by being aware that how we feel colors our perception of what we see going on around us, and then being able to understand the difference helps us respond in a healthy, empathic way. Right. And it is also important to remind ourselves that the story playing in our minds is often different from the story playing in the minds of other people. And this is the key that will help you switch gears. It's only through listening intently and empathically to others that we can really begin to understand and empathize with those differences. Then we can see how the differences can be used for the good of the community because if everybody did the same shit in the same way all the same time, there's no growth potential. When you've got differences that come into the mix, there is a potential for things to get better as a community. Medium Star says, when you smile at someone, that alone yeah. can make a person's day. Absolutely. Totally, because it's all about love and having love, feeling love, a great vibration. Absolutely. Yeah. And Marianne says, absolutely. At work, I always help coworkers that have unsavory positions, <laughs> cleaning the bathroom, sweeping the floor. I roll up my sleeves and get dirty. That's awesome. Cheryl says, change the terminology in my business instead of referring to other people as co-workers, I call them teammate or my tribe. Oh, that's great. Totally helps me stay centered yes. in compassion. Absolutely. And that's another thing um, why we use the term tribe in our group is because it does make people feel bonded. It makes people feel like a part of the community, which is what our goal is, right? Be sure to catch yeah. the utter, utter, the utter videos not the cow ones, the other videos in this playlist in the link below on the gift of empathy. And have we cleared some mysteries or busted some myths? It's a revolution. (laughs) We're fighting back against lost fairies and unicorns running amok, amok, amok. If you like this video, smack that like button. If you have questions about Zen Ed Academy, using the link below. And for more live hangouts, behind the scenes secrets, and mind hacking pro tips. Be sure to subscribe. And spank that bell right down there to turn notifications on. So you will never have to remember when we drop, drop, drop a new video. Or go live. And we know that time is a valuable and precious resource. And the fact that you guys have chosen to spend that with us, we absolutely honor and appreciate that. But most importantly, that you are here to take your life and your business and everything about you, including your brain, to a whole new level. We honor and appreciate that even more. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next video over here or over here. Over here. (laughs) Not there. You're blocking the runway. All right. So we'll see you in the next video. Thank you guys for joining us. Catch you next time. We'll see you in the next video.